I'll go into another concept of Hugo that is taxonomies. This is one of the most important content management concepts within Hugo. To understand taxonomies, let's go back to the traditional database that we had in the traditional system. A database is not just a table for web content. A database is called a relational database because it is meant to store relations between entities. The entities are represented in tables and then you have relationship between those tables in the form of one is to one, one is to many and many is to many relationships. Now, if you move this one web page, you lost that relationship somehow. And that is a problem. That our solution to move to the Jamstack created. Let's see how Hugo would solve this. Let's start with the one is to one relationship. Well, the one to one relationship doesn't need anything. There's no page tags table. So uh, in, in a one is to one relationship, what you would do is in a web page, you would put another column with a path to another web page, and that's it. That's a one is to one relationship. In one is to many, on the side of the many, you can put all the links. For example, uh, say you're building a movie website and every movie has sort of one director. So you have a movie table and a director table. If you put the name of the director in the movie table, then you got one is too many. Because uh, in, in many movies, you'll have one director and one director can have many movies, but a movie cannot have more than one director. While if you want many to many, for example, say movie and actor, then you need an actor table, which has the actor description and a movie table, which has the movie description. And then you need this intermediate table in a relational database. It says, this is a link between this movie and actor. You can get more information about the actor from the actor table, more information about the movie from the movie table. And in this example, it's web page and tags. So you can get more information about the tag from the tag table, more information about the web page from the web page table. And this table is mostly holding the relationship. Now to represent relationships in Hugo, is actually very simple because Hugo takes care of marrying this job for us. For all the three entities, here are the changes that we need to do. Tags, which is also a table, turns into a folder. That makes more sense, right? We created a folder for content for web pages. We create a folder for tags. Each tag has a file inside this folder. The web page are already files. Now, to specify a link between them, what you do is in the Hugo config, you tell us that tags is a taxonomy. What that means is tags has is a special type of a thing which provides relationship between web pages. And same are categories and series. Then in the web page, you just provide the list of tags that you have. Like you would do in a document database. Just provide that list. Hugo takes this information and then compiles this into what we need relationships. What Hugo would do is he would, Hugo would go back to the sitemap approach that the Jamstack follows. So you'll have a slash tags location in your website, which will be a mapping to this folder. In this tags folder, you could have individual tags. Even if you don't create those files, those files are logically created as soon as you enter the tag name in your content. So you don't have to create a shape file. Hugo would create it for you automatically when it renders if you've added a tag shape to any of the web pages and this linkage would done automatic would be done automatically let's talk about some official nomenclature before we get into the code officially uh, a taxonomy consists of two parts a taxonomy list and a taxonomy term a taxonomy list corresponds to the name of the table in the relational database so tags is a taxonomy list you could have series as a taxonomy list categories as a taxonomy list while well, an individual row will be a taxonomy term, for example, shape. All the data that went into this table called tags will go into this file called shape if you want to add it. If you don't have any other information, you don't even have to create this file and Hugo would create it for you. And once you tell this in the config, Hugo will do this relationship mapping for you. You don't even have to worry about the relationship mapping. Let's see this in code. So we already have this website and we don't have any relationships right now. First, to understand relationships, we need to go into the Hugo config and inform Hugo that you need to have tags as a taxonomy. This is what the config folder looks like. The config folder creates your, contains your various environments. For example, this is the configuration for the dev environment, the production environment, 
and this is the default configuration. And when Hugo compiles the production configuration, it takes this default configuration, takes the override from the production folder and creates your production configuration. And same is what it does for a dev configuration. Now Hugo already has two taxonomies defined, tags and categories. So technically, if you want to use tags, you don't need to define those taxonomies. That's done for you by default. But for the sake of this session, we'll be creating the taxonomies for ourselves manually. So taxonomies.yaml, that's the file that we'll be creating. This will contain the taxonomy of the website. Let's open taxonomies.yaml. In this file, let's add a bunch of taxonomies. A taxonomy in Hugo is not just defined like what I showed in the slides. It's more like singular plural. So tag tags, category, categories. And maybe say if you want to have a taxonomy called series, then you'll have series. Why do we need singular and plural? Hugo is good at web development, but it is not good at English. And when we want to write those taxonomies, we need both the English words for plural and singular because slash tag, because a web page can have multiple tags, but each tag is an individual tag. And Hugo cannot possibly understand how do you pluralize a word. And Hugo is agnostic to English or to any other language. Hugo supports multiple languages for creating websites. So that's all. That's why we need to define it twice. Once we do this, we can do Hugo server and run our website and then go to slash tags. This needs to be tag slash tag. What got went wrong? Yeah, I was right. So tags. The website has the following tags. We haven't created any tags, but we created the tags folder. We created, it told Hugo that there is tags, so Hugo created the virtual tags folder for us. Now let's assign some tags. Let's go into about index.md. Let's give it a few tags. For example, tags, colon, general. And this page talks about manufacturing here. So I'll just give it manufacturing as a tag. Then we go into say the manufacturing process web page inside of our blog. And we give it a tag manufacturing. That's it. Let's render the web page. Let's go into tags and refresh this. Hugo automatically created the so tags is the taxonomy list and general and manufacturing are taxonomy terms. And as you can see, like in the taxonomy term, you get the term as a variable with which you can access all its pages. Now it created a web page for general automatically for us. And then it created a about page link inside the general page. The about page also has access to its tag. It also has access to all other tags with the category general. And so does the folder manufacturing. And what it can do is it can then take those other pages and render them properly. So uh, if you say I wanted to do related pages like other pages in the manufacturer with the manufacturing tag, you could take this variable manufacturing and put the page, get the pages and show them in here. Hugo are also has a feature called related pages, which tries to, which optimizes getting related pages based on multiple taxonomies that we mentioned in Hugo in action. But for the purpose of this session, we'll just talk about creating taxonomies for having content. Now we haven't created a folder for taxonomies. And even though we did not, Hugo automatically created a folder for us. But if we want to, we can go into the content folder or and create tags as a subfolder. This is the first time we're creating it. Now in the tags folder, we can create a file called manufacturing.md if we want to give additional content for manufacturing. Similarly, we can create a file called mytag.md if we want to create a new file, a tag which doesn't have any pages yet. 
and uh, if you run hugo server oh sorry i need to go to the parent folder if you run hugo server and go to tags they did, did not refresh i think i created the tags folder so i need to create a underscore index.md so cd content cd tags touch underscore index.md slash underscore index.md and then i need to tell hugo that uh this is of type taxonomy so render it as a taxonomy page Live coding is not fun. Taxonomy layout. I hope I've called this layout now. I think I'll call the layout taxonomy. Okay, the demo gods are not with me today, but. In, uh, I'll need to figure out what the theming structure for this file is. But in general, we can define our, our taxonomies and have the individual files for them and they, they would automatically be linked by Hugo. Okay, I just deleted the tags folder. Let me see if at least the traditional tags are back. Right, so tags are back. Uh, we can provide information for the manufacturing page. Maybe this theme does not support that information. So you can still like, Hugo can provide variables, but you still need to use it in your theme. And that may not always be possible. Let's summarize what we did today. We talked about the stack, the scaling problem that we have with a traditional stack and why we came up with Jamstack as a solution, which puts too much emphasis on a content folder, but provides us the ability to organize it as a sitemap. Then we have the concept of page bundles, which can make the life easier by keeping the stuff that used to live on the web server and application server into a bundle. And we have a concept of taxonomies that, that shows us how relationships work. This is not all in content management. In human action, we talk a lot more about stuff. For example, how we properly do stage and production environments, which I tease through the config today. We also have content templates called archetypes in Hugo which I like in a form like the MySQL database schema, but they are very helpful in creating a placeholder for the content with which we can generate our content and fill up. Hugo supports a lot more than Markdown. We can extend Markdown using a concept called short codes. And we did not even talk about the rest of the Jamstack. For example, working with images. How do you do a small image, a big image, a large image? How do you write a template code that works in, that was similar to how PHP does inside the Hugo land. How do you work with themes, layouts, and the other parts of the Jamstack like APIs and JavaScript in Hugo? Uh, 